Through what channels did gender enter the body? I feel nauseous, asking. I dare, anyway, like a bore. As the train arrives above ground, unsettling the quiet ways of life, a converging line of sight, like a bridge, like stages, I cross the bridge, but my body hasn't caught up, meaning I am my body, I am not its image. Its disintegration vibrant, loosened by politics, hopelessly frayed. I am a cyborg of the present, yes, a post-colonial robot who loses out the movie role to Lucy Liu. Since puberty, I've been told I look like her. I am older now, secure in myself, so I can say this. I am a girl who looks nothing like Lucy Liu, but I am a girl who enters the visual vocabulary of many other girls the moment someone points at me and says, yes, you look like Lucy Liu. Yes, mouthing yes, nodding yes, every affirmative yes is the shape of a yes. For years, I resented Lucy Liu. For years, I masturbated to Lucy Liu. <laughs> Jawline acne, the discoloration, the redness. I shape my brows, then I color them turquoise, pink, magenta. A color less than infinite, infinite, more than enough. Here you are, prettier and older as a young Lucy Lou. It's not that I'm prettier with makeup, it's that I only begin to recognize the contours of my monstrosity, my flaws after applying gold highlight. The light was splendid, coy and petty, pretty little thing, and I laugh it up. As drag queen Pheromone says, there truly is no such thing as too much highlighter. <laughs> There's something very gentle about the very monstrous. The very monstrous is often very gentle. My feet against your chest, the page, will not relinquish its control of the domain. I do not describe my feet, they are cold, perhaps uneven. I do not describe the space. I have been floating for the past five hours, we are no longer breathing in the presence of an other. The anchoring is difficult, but I am not nervous about sinking. In a couple of years, I will return to the cyborg. This is after three moves around the country, three or four service jobs. This is after I stopped bleaching my hair, ready at last to confront my mortality. This is after I decided I would learn how to love you. We bake together and call each other as often as possible, but to see her again is strange. She's changed too, more guarded, more sullen, she allows me to meet her at a cafe. We eat sandwiches and split a slice of German chocolate cake. She's been growing. She's working on a text called Louise or Memphis Opera Blues. She's adopted a child. She says the responsibility has given her a new way of relating to herself. But what does this mean? I can't share what she tells me. Meanwhile, she keeps house, sweeping, washing dishes, folding laundry, the usual work. For the next week, I try and fail to arrange a phone call. Each time, she backs out, unaware of how the day has crept up. I have so many chores to get done, you know, like the child, child, the child's been really fussy and he will nap. Finally, she returns my email, and she informs me that she stopped eating meat, then became an exclusive carnivore, then quit all animal products. Right now, dieting preoccupies her, so does smoking. Her hair is thin and her lashes have fallen out. I am keeping it together even if no one cares to ask, she writes. Sincerely, with humility, the text has been scrapped. The text called Living or Living is a Woman's Work or Play Now, Play Never. The life of a woman, of a cyborg, passing by at all this time, I was afraid to approach her like someone in love.